This video is brought to you by an epic game called Guardian Tales, your next RPG on Switch. Guardian Tales for Nintendo Switch is an adventure RPG with classic pixel art style, showing sophisticated homage to the classic JRPGs. You will play as a Guardian Knight, newly recruited, but destined to protect the Canterbury Kingdom from invaders. Exploring each world, you will meet other Guardians to save the world together. The classic tale expands into a sci-fi epic that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Get ready, experience an unforgettable journey filled with action, puzzle solving, attractive characters, and thrilling battles. Embark on a thrilling conclusion to the first season of Guardian Tales with a fully updated World 11 which is available on March 21st. The journey with the princess will come to a close as you face a formidable boss and make a pivotal choice that determines your fate. If this game looks even remotely interesting to you, be sure to go down to the link in the description and thanks again for sponsoring this video, Mr. Guardian Tales. This is a little bit of a strange video because by the time you guys watch it i'm actually going to be at pax east on the what is it the 23rd or something like that yeah well technically i've already been there a little bit to pick up my badge and all that and yes there's some really cool zelda stuff going on a statue and and handing out some pins it, it's pretty cool uh you know for a event that nintendo said tears of the kingdom wouldn't be at Tears of the Kingdom is literally front and center. It's pretty much the first thing every attendee is going to see. So kind of crazy uh, that they didn't decide to do a demo. Like, who knows? Maybe I can hint, hint, nudge, nudge an employee and they'll let me know when the demo event's going to be. Anyways, that's not the, the topic today. We will have a vlog going out later tonight. Uh, our first vlog of the trip. Sorry I didn't get one out yesterday. There just wasn't a lot recorded. That being said, what I want to focus on today is the size of Tears of the Kingdom. This game's going to be massive. We talked yesterday about how there might have been a hint a few years ago about some scuba diving or uh, underwater exploration, and we've had that in other Zelda games. Maybe not to the degree we hoped, but we have had underwater you know, things, temples, and, and other aspects in the past. The Zora Mask and Majora's Mask. So, that's obviously one thing. We obviously have the Sky Islands and we have Hyrule, but I want to talk about the overall size of this game and just get your guys' thoughts on if this is good or if there is such a thing as maybe too big. Interesting debate, right? That being said, before we jump into that, I want to remind you that we're on a road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out... <sighs> Man, oh man, oh man, we're just going to give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom because why the heck not? So getting back into this Tears of the Kingdom discussion, I find it fascinating that the game is over 18 gigabytes in size. And by the way, that's just the initial install size. That doesn't include any possible day one patches, day one DLC, or any sort of crazy things Nintendo might add on. By the way, I'm not a proponent of day one DLC, but day one patches are pretty normal and sometimes can be several gigabytes large. Maybe this ends up being a 20 gigabyte game when it's all said and done, at least when it comes to the day one update. But here's the thing. I honestly think a lot of that size difference might have to do with assets. Like the assets could be higher resolution and that's going to take up more space. But I also think the game's going to be massive. The whole of the prior Hyrule is still there. Now, there's been some major changes to that Hyrule. We, as an example, we have no evidence the Korok Forest exists anymore. So what the heck happened to the Koroks? What the heck happened to the Great Deku Tree? What the heck happened to all of the Divine Beasts? Like, you know, at the, at the end of Breath of the Wild, we're supposed to be going to check out uh, Divine Beast Varuta for problems, and what the hell happened? <laughs> you know, it'd be nice to find out, and I, I'm sure the game does have an explanation. But... Yeah, we get to explore that Hyrule again, and as Eiji Anuma told us over the weekend, you know, this is an unexplored Hyrule, so there, there's going to be a lot uh, that, that we just don't know about. I, I think there's been a lot of assumptions that this Hyrule is pretty much going to be exactly the same, and that has maybe made people think the game is, you know, do, isn't worth $70, or you know, whatever nonsense they're throwing out there, which by the way, value is in the eye of the beholder. It's fine if you think it's not worth 70 bucks. That's your prerogative. Value is up to an individual, right? It's sort of like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so is value. That being said, I do think that this Hyrule is going to have so much new that it's going to feel very, very fresh. 
And I can't wait to just re-explore it and have that familiar yet completely different feeling. But this game is so much larger than this. These Sky Islands, as an example, aren't... Uh, at least they don't appear to be, to me, like this single layer of islands scattered all throughout the clouds of Hyrule because there seems to be even layers among the islands. If you remember some of the early trailers, like Link was falling in awfully long ways and only was just a, coming upon some of the islands below. So th there's even layers to the islands in the sky that I find to be completely fascinating and really might show how large and how in-depth the sky stuff might actually be. But then we've also seen teases of underground areas. We've seen caves. We've seen uh, little cracks in the ground. And, and you start to wonder... Is there going to be like this giant labyrinth? Now, I do think some people assuming there'll be some giant underground labyrinth of cave systems and intricate stuff. I, I think it's a little far to just assume we're going to have a lot of that, but we are going to have some. And some is more than Breath of the Wild. So again, it just adds to how big Tears of the Kingdom actually is. Then you get to the hypothetical stuff like going underwater. And at first, you know, I, I talked about how I didn't want this to happen yesterday, or I, I think underwater gameplay is one of the worst aspects in most video games that aren't specifically built for it. But I did forget one key factor. In this game, it's pretty obvious that we can craft, well, vehicles. Whether it's a hot air balloon, whether it's some drone-like thing we fly on, uh, whether it's the lawnmower, you know, we, we've had that vehicle crafting aspect essentially confirmed in the trailers and one aspect i didn't consider for underwater is what if we could make just 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 think about this for a moment what if we could make a sub no i'm not talking about five dollar foot longs and herberts and gerberts and i don't know whatever your favorite sandwich shop is i'm talking about underwater subs that would be really, really cool. There we go again. Someone's going to mention, you could just take a two-inch destroyer and dip it in water. That's a sub now, right? Look, <laughs> I'm talking about the actual, you know, physical things that we use, the submarines, right? Again, you could still use that for a sandwich. How am I supposed to talk about this without making food references? I don't, I don't, I don't think, it, you know what? You know what I'm talking about. Wouldn't it be really cool if we could build something like that and actually explore the oceans, the sea, only to an extent. Obviously, they're going to limit how far out you can go, but then they can add this whole intricate underwater system, right? You could have coral reefs and, and various wildlife everywhere. You could have sunken cities. What if there's like references to, you know, the Hyrule's version of Atlantis or something? Or heck, maybe we see old Hyrule underwater that was flooded from the Wind Waker and stuff. Like, there's just a lot that I think we could do with underwater exploration in the sense that we could build our own custom submarines. So look, I, I honestly think we are looking at a game that is going to be one of the largest video games in existence. And that's saying a lot because obviously some Minecraft maps, their max sizes on certain devices can get quite large, almost beyond imagination. We've seen really large worlds with Cyberpunk, although it's kind of in a city. But then we've also seen like the Witcher series have super massive maps. But I'm just talking about, you know, not just the map size, but just the size of what there actually is to actively explore. Because this world appears to have layers. There's layers of exploration in the sky, and there's layers of exploration on the ground, whether it's underwater, whether it's in a cave or a cave system cracks in the ground underneath buildings or if it's just new stuff on the surface it appears this game has decided that it wants to go up and down now that doesn't mean you know hyrule hasn't expanded and added new lands you know going east west north south but i do think that this game is just going to blow our minds with the sheer amount of exploration we can still do i think exploration being such a big deal in Breath of the Wild, while this will be a more fleshed out world with more things going on and lots of crazy stuff, I do think that it is going to be also fully explorable and we're going to get that magical feeling again that this feels familiar, yet for some reason I can't stop. 
I gotta see what's over that ridge. I gotta see what's down that hole. I gotta see what's over on that little island, that little speck I see 20 miles off in the air. There's going to be some magical moments with exploration in this game, and that's attributed directly to how big the actual world is going to end up being. But you know what? This is just one person spewing his guts to the internet, letting you know my thoughts on all of this. You guys let me know your thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom and the size of the world down in the description, and I will catch you in that next video. Yeah.